It's important to build the pile inside a well-defined square or rectangle. If we merely build an irregular mound of compost, heat and pressure are uneven across the pile. It's less efficient and yields less compost. Tim places the first layer of dry compost material on top of the freshly watered roughage foundation. Notice how Tim keeps the weed straw aligned as he adds it to this first layer. In subsequent layers, he will rotate the alignment of the dry material for better insulation. After Tim finishes evening out this first layer of dry material, he thoroughly wets it down. It's amazing how much water this really needs. So you gotta really soak it. Now we're ready for our next layer. Immature green alfalfa is used to build the next layer. As Tim spreads the alfalfa on top of the wheat straw, he tries to keep this green layer about the same thickness as the layer of dry material beneath it. Although the alfalfa seems to pile much higher as Tim adds it, it will be compacted to the right thickness as the pile grows. Remember, you got to water between each layer, even if it's green. You might think that because this is green material, that it's got enough moisture or water in it, but we've learned that you really need to water between each layer, give it a nice good soak, no matter what that material is. We're now ready for our soil. Oh yeah. Again, this has come from our double dug bed. We're gonna take this and we're gonna add it to the, the compost pile. And this serves many, many functions to the overall health of the pile. One of the things this soil does is help to accelerate the pile. The soil it helps to build a sponge cake layer over the whole compost pile that actually contain microbes that overall will help with the decomposition of your pile. You'll sprinkle about a half bucket of the double duck soil over each green layer. And yes, you'll water again after adding the soil. Once again, I'm going to water the whole pile. Step by step, Tim repeats the process to build up the pile. Another layer of dry material, this time aligned at right angles to the previous dry layer. This is like your perfect, these are your perfect materials. Another soaking. More green material. And more water. More soil. If you've included any kitchen waste to a green layer, this soil will help keep down the flies and odors as we continue here, we're going to be using the same steps as we've just demonstrated to build the pile up. To keep the mass of the pile evenly distributed as it grows in height, Tim advises us to work the edges with a spading fork from time to time. After we've put on a few layers, the pile tends to build up in the middle, mound up in the middle, which is not going to help us in the long run. So what we want to do is take this spading fork on the edges and just Leverage the pile out, to flatten it out. So the reason that we want to level this out is that if it builds up in the middle, it's, it does not decompose as well. And if we have it evenly spaced out, the decomposition is going to be even all the way through. We're going to do this every three or four layers to even out the pile. As the pile grows, he mixes in different crops. Here he uses fava plants as his green layer. And you can add kitchen scraps to the green layer as well. So these piles take about two to three months before they're ready in the summer, and about four to six months in the winter before they're ready for usable compost. Even when the weather is cooler and decomposition is slower, you can start a compost pile anytime you have the materials. For the final layer, we've got a full bucket of dirt. We're going to give a nice cap of soil to the whole top of this pile that we have now raised to well over three feet. 
Beautiful. We are done with this compost pile. We got the layers on. Everything looks good. Oh yeah, this is where the magic occurs. Aerobic process, sunlight, moisture, all the good stuff happening right inside there. Make sure to water the pile every day. After about three to four weeks of decomposing from the inside out, the compost pile now needs to be turned outside in. We're gonna start by pulling the stakes out. All right. So the interior of the compost pile is gonna be more decomposed than it is in the outer edges. So that's why we're gonna turn this pile. And as we do so, we're gonna make sure that the outside materials go to the inside and the inside materials become the outside of the pile. Using their spading forks, Tim and Lisa move the materials from the original pile to the new pile, making sure to move the less decomposed material to the inside of the pile. We can see there are some materials that are decomposing and some that are, are still dry, and these are the ones that should need to go inside the pile. You'll need to water the pile as you turn it to make sure it's evenly moist. The freshly turned pile is now much darker in appearance. And don't forget, you need to water it every day. We've come full circle to our original compost pile. We'd like to see if it's done and if the materials have composted well. Tim pulls away a thin layer of undecomposed straw to find rich, moist compost inside the pile. The transformation is complete. Mmm, smells good. That's one of the ways that I know this compost is done. Another way to tell is that I can't recognize any of the original materials. When your compost is properly cured, it should feel moist and crumbly in your hand. At this stage, you need to stop watering and let the pile dry out so it can be sifted and stored as part of the next step. Tim shows us how. So once the compost is dry, we bring it over to our sifter. You see the wheelbarrow is ready in case we want to transport this. We have a large screen. Very simple, we'll put the compost in, we'll sift it through. Any material that we still have on top, we'll take away and use for our next pile. The compost that falls below is ready to be stored. The special sifting apparatus Tim is using here is perfect for the task. But if all you have is a simple screen, you can still sift the compost directly into a wheelbarrow or a bucket. But if you have the materials, time and inclination, a device like this can increase your productivity. We've sifted our compost, it looks good. And now we're gonna store it. Easy way to do this is gentle on the back. Take a five gallon bucket, take a small scoop, and this go right into our storage bin. Just like that. If you're not going to use it right away, Keep the sifted compost dry in a simple shelter out of direct sunlight. We have learned that the keys to building a successful compost pile include using a variety of organic materials well distributed throughout the pile, keeping the pile well ventilated so air can reach the interior, and keeping the pile moist. So get going! Composting can be fun! and your garden will reward you for your efforts.